Hello and welcome to today's video where I'll be ranking my top 10 favorite rides in Disney California Adventure Park at Disneyland. A while back I already ranked my top 10 rides for Disneyland Park, so this video is sort of like a counterpart to that one. Disneyland is my favorite place in the world, and I'm actually headed back there in less than two weeks for the first time in three years, so I felt in the mood to make a parks related video. Let's get into it. This ranking is going to be based on the rides that are currently in DCA, so as much as it breaks my heart, former attractions and former versions of attractions won't be found on this list. I hate to break it to you guys, but that does mean no superstar limo. Full disclosure, I was a massive fan of the general California theming in DCA, and I really don't know what they're doing with the park now. Some of the California stuff is left, but then it's just a hodgepodge of IP and other random stuff. I still adore the park, but I miss when it felt cohesive. I'm gonna start off with a few honorable mentions. I know that I said I won't be including former versions of attractions, but in my opinion, it would be a shame if I did not mention the late and great California Screamin', Soarin' Over California, and the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. I miss all three dearly. An actual still existing honorable mention goes to Luigi's Relic and Roadsters. This ride is tucked away in the back of Cars Land, and it replaced the very short-lived bumper tires. I think this ride is, first of all, aesthetically wonderful. If you do it, you've got to do it at night. The ride itself is nothing crazy and more geared towards kids, but it's a very pleasant time with the string lights and the music. This is Disneyland's first trackless ride as well, which is a really cool feature. I always make sure to do this at least once on a trip. But enough of that, let's kick things off and officially start the list. This Ferris wheel ride got a reskin and a name change for the Pixar Pier overhaul, but the ride itself remained exactly the same. I think the new name is very stupid. I still just call it Mickey's Fun Wheel, but I like how the carts each have a Pixar character on them now. I also like that you can choose whether you go on a stationary or a swinging cart. I almost always go for the swinging ones, and it's actually pretty terrifying, but in a fun way, for me at least. I can see this absolutely not being someone's cup of tea, and I wouldn't blame them. If you've never been on this, just to give you an idea, they include barf bags inside the carts, so... <laughs> My favorite part of the ride experience is that it's probably the best view of the parks that you can get. This ferris wheel is tall, and I love that it serves as sort of the landmark face of the park. Its incorporation into the World of Color show is awesome as well. Monsters, Inc. is my favorite Pixar movie, so I'm really glad that it's represented in the parks with its own dark ride. It's a little weird that it's in the back of Hollywoodland, especially when Pixar Pier exists now, but I'm just happy it exists. Although I fear its days are numbered. The ride itself does a pretty effective job of taking you through the story from the movie. I wish the climax with all the doors was a little more extensive, and I'm not a fan of the appearance of the Sully animatronics, but other than that I have no complaints. A notable highlight is that at the end of the ride, you get to have a short conversation with Roz. It's a really nice touch. The queue for the ride is also a standout that could be easily overlooked. There are so many signs and things to read that have such creative detail on them, and it feels so immersive. There's a video that plays on several screens as well, and it all contributes to making me feel like I'm really in Monstropolis. I'm not huge on interactive rides, but this is my favorite one that I've experienced. I haven't gotten to ride the new Spider-Man Web Slingers attraction yet, but I will soon enough, so we'll see if that changes. I love the Victorian era look of the exterior facade, especially when it's lit up in white lights at night, and the big Mr. Potato Head animatronic is a cool touch. As for the ride itself, I like the setup and the different levels. The biggest thing is that it's super easy to operate. 
I find rides like Buzz Lightyear's Astro Blasters to be difficult to tell what I'm doing, so I prefer the shooting style in Midway Mania. It also gives my arm a good workout, so hopefully I'm burning off some of the corn dogs I've undoubtedly eaten during my visit. I'm pleased that the Toy Story franchise is represented with a ride, and it fits right in as the heart of Pixar Pier. Based off appearances, you may write this roller coaster off as a little kitty ride, but it's actually one of the scariest rides in the park. The sharp turns genuinely make you feel like you're going to fly off the tracks, and there's a couple of decent drops as well. I enjoy the view you can get of the park all lit up if you ride this at night. This ride used to be called Mulholland Madness. I find the goofy re-theme to be a bit random, but I do like that it has something to do with Disney now. It's a compact little coaster, but it packs a big punch. I'm a big fan of it, and I definitely recommend it to you if you like a little thrill in your rides. I was elated when this dark ride centered on my all-time favorite Disney movie opened. Ariel's Undersea Adventure is almost a perfect execution of translating a beloved Disney fairy tale story into a ride. My only gripe is that it skims over the climax pretty quickly, but it's quite a light-hearted, charming ride, so I understand not wanting to bring that energy into it. Besides, Ursula is well represented in the poor unfortunate souls scene. That is one of, if not the best animatronic in Disneyland Resort. The under the sea part of the ride is a spectacle, just like the scene is in the movie. There's so much to look at. And the kiss the girl scene is just gorgeous. I love having a dark ride that feels new and does its movie justice. The clamshell ride vehicles are super cute, and the line never gets too long for this one as it's a continuously moving ride. The exterior is appealing to look at as it's clean and pristine, and I love the little details such as there being seashells pressed into the cement in the ground. This one is just a short, sweet, and lovely time. So this is where you're going to start hearing me whine about how much I preferred former versions of attractions. I know opinions on things like rides and movies are subjective. It's all a matter of personal taste and the different ways we experience things. But I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that Soren over California is factually superior to Soren around the world. And I feel comfortable saying that because most of the time when it comes to opinions on changes Disneyland makes, it's very polarizing. We can hardly ever agree, but I've never seen Disney fans more united than when it comes to this attraction. Almost everyone seems to prefer the former version. It was just so much better. You'd think seeing the wonders of the world would be more exciting than various locations limited to California, but it's not the case. I guess the California version felt more personal, and the way it was shot also felt much more authentic. I'm not a technical person, so that's the best I can describe it, but yeah. The California version made me feel like I was there, literally soaring over rivers, forests, beaches, and deserts. And the world version is just generic feeling shots zooming in on iconic landmarks. And the score! The California music was perfection. The new music still uses themes from the old one, but it just pales in comparison. I also preferred the orange and pine scents to the new lavender and dirt, grass, whatever it is now. With all this trashing of soaring around the world, you may be wondering why it's ranking in my top 5. And it's because my complaints about it are only in comparison to what it was before. It's still a really cool and impressive ride, and had I not ever known the former version, I think I would just love this for what it is. Unfortunately, I can't not compare it, but the ride is still great. I love the imagineering of the rising tiered seat system, and some of the new locations they include are awesome, especially the Matterhorn. So, warped Eiffel Tower aside, I still have a fantastic time with Soarin' Around the World. I maybe don't prioritize it as much as I used to, but I still look forward to experiencing it. The silver lining is, Disney has been bringing back Soarin' Over California every once in a while, so the possibility to still experience the ride in its former glory very much exists.
I did prefer California Screamin', but I'm not nearly as mad about this one. Doing an Incredibles reskin not only meant that the ride would fit into the new Pixar Pier, but it added an actual narrative to the roller coaster. I preferred the old version mostly due to nostalgia and personal attachment, not because I believed it was genuinely better, like with Soren. Disney's been a little preoccupied with only wanting to include the newest versions of their IPs into the parks, as we've seen with the restrictive timeline they imposed on themselves in Galaxy's Edge, so I get why they centered the story around the events of Incredibles 2, but I would have preferred focusing on the first movie. The Jack-Jack thing is fun, but it feels a bit weird and random. I'm sure it's hard trying to concoct a story that fits with an already existing ride structure, so even though it's not my favorite, I think they did pretty well. My favorite part is the tunnels when you go down the drops. If you ride this at night, the tunnels are all lit up and it looks awesome. At the end of the day, this is just a fun roller coaster. Disneyland has always been more about immersive theming than providing thrills. If you're looking for crazy rides, you don't go to Disneyland, you go to Six Flags. But if you are looking for something on the more thrilling end of what Disney has to offer, the Incredicoaster is up there. I love the blast off, the drops, the upside down loop, and the rise and fall at the end. You really can't go wrong with this one. This ride is 50% a blast and 50% being terrified that you're gonna get absolutely soaked. But to be honest, that only adds to the fun. I used to be a little hung up on getting too wet, but I've come to care less about that now and I'm starting to enjoy this ride more and more. I love the rustic theming around Grizzly Peak, and even though it's not really Disney related, I think it's very well done. The vibes I get around this place, especially at night, are sublime. Usually when I go to the parks, I'm only with one other person, so we get grouped in with strangers on this ride. Normally I wouldn't love this, but the bonding experience you go through with these other people in a short time is just another layer to the fun. You all face each other in a circle and scream together and laugh when the water sloshes over. For most people, it would be preferable to ride this in the heat of the day to cool down, but I do prefer to ride this at night for a couple of reasons. First, I think it's extra fun to be spinning through the rapids and the caves when it's dark so you can't tell what's going to happen. And second, if you do get soaking wet, then you don't have to put up with it for too long if the day is almost over. And you can typically walk on the ride because there isn't much of a wait at that time of day. I will say though, the geysers that periodically go off towards the end of the ride are brutal. I can deal with getting wet, but if you find yourself victim to one of those, rest in peace. I try to separate the potential consequences of riding Grizzly River Run from my actual experience on it, because riding this is just a fantastic time. This entry begins with the admission that the Tower of Terror was my favorite ride in all of DCA and my second favorite in Disneyland Resort overall, behind only Indiana Jones Adventure. When I first heard the rumor that this overhaul was happening, I thought it was a joke. And when the news broke that it was happening for real, I was shattered. The drop function of the ride is still the same, but the theming of 1930s Hollywood and the haunted hotel aesthetic was everything to me. Losing that music, the Twilight Zone narrative, the interior decor, and the stunning exterior hurts me to this day. I hated the Guardians reskin for a long time purely out of spite. Initially it fell quite far in my ranking, but over the years I've softened up a bit. The main thing I can't dispute is that this is still an insanely fun drop ride. To its credit, it's actually more fun now because they've added more drops. I still don't really get why they tried to force the Guardians theme with this specific attraction, but I'm less passionately against it at this point. I would give a lot to have the old version back, but it is what it is. I think what they did to the outside is hideous. It looks like a bunch of barf colored rusted shit, and it's an eyesore that clashes with the skyline from a lot of angles, but the inside is quite well done. And with the Bugs Land being converted to Avengers Campus, the ride's existence is a little less out of place now. I also think that if it had to become a Marvel ride, a Spider-Man theme would have made way more sense. 
there's literally a scene with a falling elevator in Spider-Man Homecoming. As much as I say I'm not as bitter anymore, I could still complain till the sun goes down about this. When it came to determining my ranking, however, I couldn't deny how much of a blast I still have experiencing the drops on this ride. The feeling is indescribable, and I just crave it. Whenever this ride ends, I'm still wanting more, and so it keeps me coming back. For me, the theme is a shell of what it once was, but I have to accept the reality that it has changed. Again, the inside does look great, and that Rocket Raccoon animatronic is impressive. I can get over myself long enough to admit that this is still a brilliant ride, and my beloved Hollywood Tower Hotel still has her bones somewhere in there. I miss seeing those eerie flickering letters and the way the building would become illuminated in glorious purple light at nighttime, but thankfully the Twilight Zone theme still lives on in some of the other parks. And as generic as the name is, I can still have a total blast riding Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout. If you've hung around this channel for a while now, you'll know it's no secret that I love cars, and this ride is the perfect combination of a dark ride and a thrill ride, to use the term loosely. The ride begins outside with an awesome recreation of the waterfall scene from the movie, and then it takes you inside for a visit to Radiator Springs. It's not exactly a retelling of the movie's events, but it immerses you well enough. It also brings a bit of variety, because you can either go through Ramon's paint shop or Luigi's tires. And then you get paired up with another car for a fast-paced race to finish it off. I never pay much mind to whether or not my car wins the race, but it's a great added element that's especially fun for kids. I just love being out in the open air, speeding around with that marvelous red rock terrain surrounding you. The work that Imagineers did to create the facade for this attraction is stunning. There are some fun details in the queue, and I like the music tracks that play. I'm just all about anything and everything to do with Radiator Springs, so this ride really does it for me. The theming is top tier, there's story, and there's a little thrill to it. It's a well-rounded experience, and if you enjoy cars, it's just that much better. It is weird knowing that my true favorite ride in DCA no longer exists, but I went on about that long enough. Radiator Springs Racers is a great ride, and it's certainly worthy of the top spot as well. And that's the list. Thank you so much for joining me on this ranking of my top 10 favorite rides in Disney California Adventure. We've been in movie ranking mode lately, so it's a nice change of pace. If you've been to DCA, let me know what your favorite rides are in the comments down below. And if you haven't been, let me know which attractions you'd most like to ride. I can't wait to experience these wonderful attractions once again. If you liked this video, hit those like and subscribe buttons, and head over to the Trove to check out more rankings, trivia, and video essays. I'll have playlists linked in the description down below. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you next time.